Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars The Clone Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than Darth Maul. Now I personally have been really excited to get this guy in and finally he has been released and he's here. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. If you do like seeing these early Hot Toys reviews, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new reviews go live on the channel. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and while the imagery is relatively similar to what we'd expect from Hot Toys Star Wars figures, the form factor definitely isn't. It's got these angled corners, it's rather narrow, and it's also quite tall. I think we'll find out why that's the case in just a second. We do have a massive image of the figure himself on the front of the box with a head sculpt that looks eerily similar to the DX-18. We will be doing comparisons back to the Solo and Phantom Menace versions of Darth Maul though throughout the course of this video. Star Wars down below plus Darth Maul. On the side, Star Wars once again and of course all of the various warnings are printed on the back of the box. Now if we slide off the top cover, we are immediately greeted by the Mandalorian sarcophagus. We will discuss what I think about them including this as part of the box a little bit later on in the video. As for Darth Maul himself, he is housed in a plastic clam tray, but it's a lot smaller than what we've come to expect from usual Star Wars figures. They're usually a lot wider, all of the accessories are spread out along the front so you can pretty much see everything he comes with on one layer. But here, it's literally just Darth Maul. As for the figure himself, first in hand impressions are pretty darn positive. I've always loved this particular design for the character. Underneath this clam tray we do have another with all of the various accessories. Now it's a little bit tricky to get to as it is actually pegged up underneath, but what we are going to do now is get all of Darth Maul's accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have most, but not all, of the parts and pieces. Now we will be checking out the sarcophagus a little bit later on. Starting off with the display base first, it's the usual rectangular Star Wars style. Some detail sculpted into the surface and it's been cast in this kind of brown slash grey plastic. Now I wouldn't be surprised if this was meant to replicate the flooring in the throne room on Mandalore. But at the same time, that might be a little bit of a stretch. Star Wars and Darth Maul etched into this metal nameplate, and of course a regular crotch grabber up on top. Now if you do want Maul displayed holding his lightsaber, as I'm pretty sure you will, you do have two options to get that done. The first of which is pre-attached into this hand, which is then pre-attached to this forearm because it lights up. You will see how that works a little bit later on. Now interestingly enough, his hand is attached to the top portion, not in the center. That's been done so he can have one hand on either side. But if you do have him just holding it in one hand, it might look a little bit goofy. So then you would opt to use this one. One side is detailed to be the Phantom Menace lightsaber hilt, but of course it was chopped in half so he's added this new section down below. It's painted in this relatively clean metallic chrome silver. There is some dirt and grime down in the crevices, but as I said, for the most part it is nice and crisp and clean. Now you can remove these lightsaber blades 
I'm hesitant to call them red. They kind of read more of a translucent pink. I would be perfectly fine if they painted them in a very fiery deep red, as I'm sure a lot of people would be as well. You also get these swooshing lightsaber blades that I am a huge fan fan of. The colour is a lot deeper on one side than it is on the other, so it's clearly swooshing in one direction. You do of course get two of those to attach in either hilt. You also get a fully wired hood that attaches via Velcro, and you'll see that on him a little bit later on. You also get a Darth Maul head sculpt, of course, as you would expect, and we will compare this to the other versions. But for the most part, I really like the way this looks. There is some skin texture on the surface, the tattoos are actually sculpted in, and the red is a nice, deep and rich red. You also have the horns, which are a little bit larger than what we saw on the Phantom Menace version, and you do have fully moving eyes. Hot Toys does include a tool that you are meant to use to actually move them. Before you go about switching or changing out anything, please make sure you are reading the instructions first. You also get a clone gauntlet so Darth Maul can spy on the clones. This can also be worn on him, and we will of course try that out. You also get a couple of gloved hands, but you don't get a ton. You get two lightsaber blade holding hands, one force push hand, and then two relaxed palms that come on him out of the box. The sculpted in detail does a decent enough job of looking like a real leather glove, but I just wish there were more of them. And I think the reason why they didn't give you a ton is because Darth Maul also comes with some ungloved hands. You do get some paint on his fingernails that look a little bit weird. Some people have pointed out, and rightly so, that Ahsoka didn't include any colour on her nails whatsoever, but Darth Maul has orange fingernails? It might be a detail that I missed, but I'm fairly certain they aren't supposed to be orange. Correct me if I'm wrong though, down below. What we are going to do now is get Maul himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And for the most part, this guy ticks a lot of my boxes. He isn't perfect, but at the same time, it can't have been easy taking a look that was only ever seen in animation and translating it into a physical thing, based off a live-action version of Darth Maul. There are a lot of firsts here. Now, I personally really do like the way he turned out. A lot of people would have preferred, I'm sure, for them to have gone and leaned into that animated aesthetic, but at the same time it wouldn't have fit with the other figures in your display, so this works for me. Pretty much from head to toe there is something to look at. This outfit is very busy. The closest approximation to this in live action would be the solo appearance, but even that is a little bit more toned down. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be removing all of the layers that he currently has on on his upper torso to check out the body underneath and we will be attaching the hood just to see how it all works with the horns on his head sculpt. Now let's get the elephant out of the room first. Based off some early videos, people were screaming that this guy had a long neck. Now, I don't know why theirs was sitting as high as it was, but I found that if you push the head sculpt down, push up the shoulder pad areas just a little, it looks perfectly fine, it looks in proportion. Now, yes, if you do angle it up, it does expose slightly more of the neck, but even then, I don't think it looks overly long, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on. Now I know we've already spoken about the head sculpt at length, but I'm pleased to report that it looks great on the body. It's not too big and it's not too small. Now one thing that I did notice 
is that the red on the chest is a lot more vibrant than the red on the head sculpt. Does it bother me? No, not really, but it may potentially bother you, and I can totally understand why it would. Now, as for the outfit, this outer tunic section is made of a very interesting synthetic material. It doesn't feel like pleather, it feels exactly like the material they used on the solo version of Darth Maul, so it feels like it should be relatively sturdy. You don't have any wires on the inside section, but for some reason there is a wire on the outside portion. There isn't one down the bottom either, but luckily that wire is strong enough to get this thing to pretty much do whatever you want it to do. And that does extend all the way up over the shoulder pad, so you can shape it and get it to look the way you want it to. Around back, the belt is held in by Velcro, and the belt itself is also made of that same synthetic fabric, with these hard plastic pieces adhered over the top. Now the lightsaber does clip in in a different way to Ahsoka's, which I am very happy about. It literally just slides in using the pre-existing clip. It isn't the most secure connection in the world, but it's far better than having tiny little pieces that could potentially break off. Now, underneath this outer section and the belt, you do just have this kind of brownish grey fabric. It's quite lightweight, and because it's actual fabric and it's used for the pants as well, we can go crazy with the posing at the elbows and at the knees and not have to worry about any creasing. Now up on top of that, you do have some very large shoulder pads. There is a ton of texture on the surface. They are attached with Velcro, so you can remove them if for whatever reason you don't want them to be there. They are a nice soft rubbery plastic, so they should get out of the way when it comes to posing. You also get some gauntlets, one on either side. The one on the right actually has a split down the front, so you can remove it and use it with the light-up lightsaber arm. Now, coming down to the legs, you only have half a pair of pants because the rest of the leg is a robot leg. We'll touch on that in just a second. It does bunch up and it is cinched right above the knee. You can move it down and tuck the top part of the droid leg over it so it looks very nice and seamless. You also have some pockets up top and a little bit of padding for the thighs. Not a ton, so fingers crossed it won't affect articulation. As for the robot or droid legs, they look great. They are very accurate to Season 7 of The Clone Wars. They aren't anywhere near as detailed as the solo version of Darth Maul, but I still really like the way they look. There is a ton of texture that you can actually feel on the surface of the legs themselves. They are painted to look somewhat realistic, even though they do look a little bit cartoony at the same time. Underneath, you do have a little bit of tread sculpted in, but I don't exactly know why we have screw holes here. Hot Toys, you've gotten away with not doing that before. I'm not sure why they are present here. Either way, if you are wondering what he looks like with his hood on, here we have it. Now, I personally have always struggled with hoods on Darth Maul figures because of the horns. When you try and get it to sit down as low as possible, it just springs right back up. If you spend a little bit more time and you're more patient than I am, I'm sure you can work with the wires that extend all the way around the front to get it to sit and look a lot better. But as it stands, yeah, it can go on there, but in my display, I think I'm just going to go without. For those curious what he looks like without all of the outer robes on though, now I don't know how many of you will use this in your display. It kind of just feels like an afterthought to me. I mean, it's a generic stock body, all of the joints are fully exposed, and I understand why. They wanted to keep the costs down, they didn't want to engineer a brand new upper torso when they didn't have to, Plus, I don't think they've cracked the code with printing these tattoos on a seamless body as of yet. But at the same time, if they are going to set the precedent of sculpting in the tattoos on his face, then they absolutely need to do that on his body. Hot Toys, 
Nobody set that precedent except for you. You're the ones who decided to do that. So if you're going to sculpt the tattoos in and have actual edges to them on the face, you have to do it to the body. It just doesn't make sense not to do that. Now, if you are wondering what this version of Maul looks like with other head sculpts, luckily they are all compatible. This is the head sculpt that came with the Phantom Menace Maul, and oh yes, I really like the way this looks. It actually sits a little bit lower on the neck, so everything fits in proportion. Now, technically this is a much younger Darth Maul, so his horns are shorter. It's not super accurate, but if you wanted to, then yes, it absolutely is compatible. But by far the one that I was most expecting to see here is an angry Darth Maul sculpt, because this just breathes so much life into this figure. I am super tempted to find a way of getting another angry Darth Maul sculpt, because this looks absolutely fantastic. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Clone Wars Maul alongside Solo Maul. Now save for a couple of similarities, these two do present as very different looking figures. They might share a head sculpt, they might both show a little bit too much skin through their upper shirt, and they both have droid legs. That's where the similarities end. The outfits are completely different, and so too are the bodies. Solo Maul is a little bit bigger and bulkier, but shorter at the shoulders. It's not the neck that's giving him a shorter appearance, it's actually the droid legs. We will be doing a much closer up comparison on the droid legs in just a second between both of these two, but for now, the Solo Maul is still my undisputed favourite Maul in the display. But do let me know which of these two you personally do prefer. Next up, here we have Phantom Menace Maul, and I personally really still like him. It's a much simpler outfit from a simpler time. It's an all-black Sith rogue look, and there aren't a ton of details to look at. That being said, the new one is a little bit taller, he has a fully detailed upper torso, even though I have my complaints with it, and the outfit I think is a little bit more exciting to look at. There are multiple colours at play, he's got this big honking belt with weathering and detail on the surface, plus the droid legs. We can't forget the droid legs. Now, the Menace one does come with multiple head sculpts and potentially a speeder if that's the version you went with. So overall, as a deluxe package, I still give the win to Phantom Menace, but as a display piece that's going to stand out in your collection, I think Clone Wars takes the win. Lastly, here we have Ahsoka, also from Season 7 of The Clone Wars, and I love the way they look together. Now, she is shorter than Maul, but not overly so. You can very clearly tell that these two were designed to go together. I wouldn't be surprised if a ton of you out there have them posed battling in the display, and I'm tempted to do that myself. As I said, I am so happy with how these two look standing side by side. Just quickly, for a robot leg comparison, I think there is pretty much no contest. We can all agree the solo legs look way better. It's interesting that in the timeline his legs get potentially less advanced and a lot more messy with the wires and pistons sticking out, but I just prefer the way they look. They look a lot more mechanical and a lot less like an animated boot, which is what we're seeing on the left. Because there is so much controversy surrounding this head sculpt, I decided let's give it its own segment. Now comparing it to the solo sculpt that I'm 99% sure it's based off, you can see some differences, but a ton of similarities. The differences are relatively straightforward. The horns are a different colour, and so too is the skin. Plus, there is a ton more skin texture on the solo version. Everything else, though, is exactly the same. The expression, the way the eyes work, even the shape and size of the ear. But as you can see, there is just so much more surface detail on the sculpt on the right. 
I'm pretty sure that's just Hot Toys' way of conveying age. If there are more wrinkles and details on the flesh, that means it's an older character. But at the end of the day, yeah, I'm right there with you. I believe these two are the same sculpts. It's just that this one looks a little bit smoother. Speaking of smoother though, here is the Phantom Menace Maul. Now this is a completely different sculpt, his mouth is closed and his horns are a lot smaller. It's going to be down to personal preference which one you prefer, but there is even less skin texture and surface detail on this one. So the Clone Wars head sculpt kind of sits somewhere in the middle. As promised, here we have the LEDs on the lightsaber hilt in low light. Now I personally am never a huge fan of showing these off in complete darkness, because I think it gives them an unfair advantage. Let's be honest, we're never really looking at our figures in complete darkness so that the lightsabers can be as bright as possible. We have our lights in the collection room turned on. But nevertheless, as you can see, it looks pretty darn good. Now it's always going to be brightest towards the top of the hilt, and it will darken out towards the tip of the blade. There's not really much that can be done about that, aside from either using a much stronger LED, or using a CCFL blade. I am hoping that Hot Toys does experiment with other types of light-up lightsabers in the future, but for now, this is what we've got. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, as we discussed earlier, it is on a magnet. Surprisingly, though, you do get a ton of range going back, but almost none looking forward. You do, however, get swivel and pivot side to side. Now, the arms are super restricted. They will go out to about there, but as you can see, they are really fighting me. They will go forward and back. They do have a butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. A single ratcheted bend at the elbow that incorporates a swivel, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does have a joint at the midsection and another at the waist. Crunching forward, going back, swivel and pivot side to side. Now it's worth noting if you remove the belt and the multiple layers up top, you might get slightly more range. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a ratcheted double bend at the knee that is oh so clicky, and you do have a hinge and swivel down here for the ankle. It is one of the sturdiest joints that I've ever seen by Hot Toys. It also does give you a little bit of pivot side to side. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing I actually think is an avoidable one, but I have seen it mentioned online a ton. It's the long neck issue. I think it's one of those instances where early photos and videos kind of made this guy look worse than he actually is. If you poof up the shoulder pads a bit and push the head sculpt as far down as it will go, I think it looks perfectly serviceable. But yes, I have seen some people mention the long neck as an issue. The second annoying thing has bugged me since the very first Darth Maul figure, and it's that stupid little pleather cap they put on the wrist peg. Instead of doing this, literally just give us some black wrist pegs and it won't be an issue because when you're moving the wrist around, you'll only see the black wrist peg in there anyway. But as it stands, the reason why I hate those little pleather pieces so much is that it becomes incredibly difficult to actually peg the hand on there, because you have something that's actively fighting against it and pushing it off. So whenever I get a Darth Maul figure, those pieces are the first to go. The third annoying thing is a two for one. Now the first part of it is the choice of body. They've just gone with the stock Wolverine body. You heard that right, this is the body that they used with the The Wolverine figure in the black suit. Suit. Now it was too scrawny then and it's far too scrawny now. You can actually even see sculpted in chest hair because 
this is meant to be Hugh Jackman's body, I'm pretty sure Darth Maul doesn't have any chest hair. At the very least, the tattoos are nicely printed and it's a nice vibrant red, but it does come with some other drawbacks. Number one, you do have a split right here, so if you have him displayed shirtless, it's going to be very obvious. And number two, single bend elbows. The bane of a lot of collectors' existence is here once again. This guy is a Sith figure. He's meant to be able to fly around and use his lightsaber in all kinds of ways. The single bend elbows are definitely going to limit that. The second part is that the upper part of the trousers kind of look really unfinished. I think they could have figured out a better way of cinching this and stitching this together, so when you do have him displayed without his shirt on, it doesn't look so goofy. The first cool thing is the way they've done the robot legs. They are super sturdy and very accurate. I love the way they're painted, I love the way they're sculpted, and I love the type of joints that they've used. The second cool thing is the inclusion of the sarcophagus. At first, I didn't really know how to feel about this. I mean, I would have preferred a sculpted plastic piece, but let's be honest, that would have raised the cost, and how many of us are actually going to have our full Darth Maul figure displayed in a plastic box so that you can only see his head sculpt? If they were to have gone that route, I would have loved to have seen a second head sculpt so you could pop it in the window and see Darth Maul inside, but still have your figure for the display. I mean, there is texture on the surface, the print is extremely high quality, and it looks the part. That, for me, is the most important thing. I don't need it to be made out of actual plastic if it looks the way it should. In the back of my display, this is still going to present as the Mandalorian sarcophagus. So while not everyone is going to love this, I personally really do. The third cool thing is, just like the other Darth Maul variants, this one retains the moving eyes. Now, Hot Toys does include this little tool to move them around, but I've found that if you want to, you can literally just pop your finger inside and move them to where you want them to be. This makes the figure so much more versatile, you can pretty much change the expression just by simply moving the eyes around. I'm one of those collectors that would love to see every single Hot Toys figure come with moving eyes. Hopefully someday in the future, it's something that they experiment with. Just wrapping up on Maul, based off his appearance in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Now at the start of the video, I told y'all I was super excited to finally have him in hand. At the end of the video, can I say that I am left satisfied? Well, the answer, surprisingly, even to me, is yes and no. Don't get me wrong, I'm still really happy to have this look for him in the display, but I'm kind of let down at the same time. Hot Toys, I understand. This is the third version of a character you've made before, he might not sell as well. Therefore, you need to cut costs wherever you can. The sarcophagus being made out of cardboard, I'm fine with that. But please, don't use a stock body when it's not right for the character. It's a little bit too slim here, the tattoos have been painted over a sculpted hairy chest, and he gets single bend elbows. For a character that's as agile as Maul, if you want to give him swap out single bend elbows because they look cleaner, yeah, totally, go for it but also includes swap out double bend elbows so we can get real crazy with the posing, cause that's what Maul is known for. I also would have loved to have seen an angry expression head sculpt. Don't even re-sculpt anything, just use the Phantom Menace angry expression sculpt, but pop the larger solo horns in and Bob's your uncle, we have an upgraded version of that sculpt. It could have worked perfectly fine, it fits on the neck peg, no issues whatsoever. So while I said I am happy to have this guy, as you can tell, I'm also a little bit perplexed at some of the choices they ended up making. He's still well worth adding to your Clone Wars display, but just be aware of 
all of that stuff I literally just mentioned. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Double jointed arms.